What's up, what's up? Thanks for joining another episode of Handles. My name is Lorenzo, and we're just gonna dive right into this one. So I get the opportunity to go speak to this school, specifically juniors and seniors, around a multitude of things, right? But the majority is what they plan on doing next with their life, right? So what that next step looks like for them. So we get to the subject of goal setting, defining out what their structure looks like, what objectives they have out there, targets, plans, just different things like that, right? Do you see yourself in college? If not, where do you see yourself? What does that look like? So I give them this exercise to do, right? And they go through this piece of paper. Each one of them writes down their top three goals, just goals that they want to knock out within the next six months, 12 months, and or 18 months. And if they feel comfortable, share it with the class. Love to hear it. We'll discuss some of them, right? So we can maybe find some common denominators, poke some holes into some certain things and being able to identify how we can maybe spread it out a little bit. What I found out was really concerning. Stick with me on this one. Everyone has a grip on life. Everybody feels like they have a handle. Afraid to share the mistakes. The stories are what connect us. They are the key. We're running out of time. So as I said before, what I found out was really concerning. So I start having some of the students in mind, you were looking at 17 to 18 year olds and they're standing up and they're telling the entire class, the entire audience, the group of individuals that are there, our next generation, mind you, of what their goals are. Six months, 12 months, 18 months down the road. And I keep hearing what I like to call preventative goals. Now you're probably gonna ask what those are. If you already know what that is, bear with me on this. So what I like to call preventative goals are things that we put in place to prevent from other things happening, almost cause and effects, right? So I'll give you an example of some of the things that the students were putting down. I want to leave home and purchase my own house and or an apartment to prevent myself from having to deal with my parents' rules. I want to purchase this specific vehicle to prevent myself from asking for rides all the time. I want to start my own business to prevent myself from having to work for anybody. Preventative goals. Nothing really that we're shooting to, just things that we have in place specifically because we don't want to deal with the latter. So I stopped the class because in the back of my mind, I remember something that just kind of hits me. I did the same exercise with a group of adults, right? It was maybe 40, 50 people in the room, the exact same exercise. And they were on the same path. Now, mind you, the students, about 70% of the students that stood up all had some preventative goals somewhere within their top three. The adults, about 80 to 90% of the group had preventative goals. We'll get to that in a little bit. So in this specific class, we had quite a few athletes and there were quite a few football players in the class. So I wanted to tie it to something that they would be able to understand from a football perspective, right? So I introduced to them the prevent defense. Now, some of you already know what that is. If you have any type of background with football, you already know what that is. If not, bear with me. So the prevent defense is something that every single team has and it's normally only used two times a game, if that right before halftime and at the end of the game. There's only one reason why you put out a preventative defense or a prevent defense. The main reason to have a prevent defense is to avoid the worst case scenario. Now the worst case scenario is it's right before halftime, you do not have the ball and you don't want the other team to throw a long pass, make a long run, maybe do a trick play and score at the end of that specific period. That's the worst thing that can happen. That's the worst case scenario. So what defenses do is they grab the majority of their players on defense and they strategically place them closer to the goal line to avoid that worst case scenario of someone scoring on them. 
the prevent defense. Now I tell you that because the way I was explaining to the class, it kind of clicked. There were different light bulbs that were coming on, some a little dimmer than others, but there were light bulbs that were coming on. So the class had to understand that 70% of them are going to feel like they're losing in life because they're only playing the game of life in a prevent defense. So life is continuing to score on you because you're playing one of the worst defenses you can play and you're playing it 70% of the time. So life is slowly driving the ball down the field and scoring. And you can't stop it because you only have a few plays that are targeted, that are specific, that are planned, that are aggressive. Something that's going to get in the way of life to challenge it. You take no risks. You're not aggressive at all. So life continues to score on you. So I asked them to redo the exercise and come up with some more targeted plans and or goals that we could shoot for. Some that didn't necessarily have preventative measures tied to it. Things that just are specific to them that they want to go chase. It's put in place to chase. Very simple. Now let's go back to us as adults. I told you I did this exact same exercise with adults, maybe two to three months earlier. And when I did this, 80 to 90% of the adults that attended that specific class had preventative goals out there. Now you're probably gonna say that you don't do such a thing. You're probably gonna say that you don't live such a way. You're probably gonna say that that can't be you. But allow me to throw some specific things out there to you. Not that they wrote this down, but this is how we live. We decided to stay in that relationship to prevent from feeling alone. We purchased that specific object to prevent from being the only person in our specific group without it. We decided to stay with this aimless job to prevent from missing more bills. We live life in a prevent defense. Can you imagine that? So if you are an athlete, if you are a fan, if you understand football or sports in general, can you imagine your favorite team playing the game of life in a prevent defense the entire game? You have no chance. You have no chance. You can't succeed. You can't win. You're constantly waiting for the worst case scenario. And that's how we live. It's no wonder we feel like we're losing the game of life. Of course we are. We have no aggressive plays in our playbook. We have no intentions of stopping the momentum of life. We have no intentions of changing or curving what could be happening tomorrow. We take no risks. We want no part of it. We simply want to go with the current and hope that everything works out. Now this is what happens. Every once in a while, life fumbles the ball. Not because you did anything. Not because you called a fantastic defense. Life just accidentally didn't get the ball from the center. And they dropped the ball and you got it. And you know what we call it? We call it opportunity. We say you got a great opportunity here, right? But it's not because you did anything. Life just fucked up. That's all. It just made a mistake. And then you have an opportunity to capitalize on it. But we have no plays in our game plan. We have nothing laid out. We have absolutely nothing to shoot for that makes it aggressive. We are not gonna take any risks with life because we don't wanna end up having them score on us. But life is scoring regardless. So what difference does it make? You're okay living check to check, right? That's okay, right? You're okay trying to keep your kids away from a specific influence. That's okay, right? You're okay hoping that your health lasts you into the 60s and 70s, right? That you're okay with it. You're okay with anything. As long as life doesn't score, you're okay with it. So needless to say, as we completed the updated exercise of goal setting with the class, they put together some fantastic goals that they felt like was a little bit more aggressive, that they felt like was more targeted, more objective, something that they had in their hands that they could chase, something that didn't require them to wait on anything to happen, something that they thought didn't have them put in a position to where they had to prevent something else from happening. And it was fantastic. And I hope they get a chance to chase those goals. At some point, we all have to get tired of playing a prevent defense. At some point, 
you have to get tired of hoping life doesn't score, hoping it makes a mistake, hoping it fumbles the ball so that we get an opportunity. It's time for us to put other plans in place, targeted plans, aggressive plans, and take those risks. We need to create a blitz package. You need to take the time to create a blitz package on defense. It's okay. It's okay to be aggressive. Give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen? So this week, my ask is extremely simple. Stop playing the game of life in a prevent defense. Everybody knows that the best plays are made when you're on your toes, not your heels. Thanks again for joining another episode of Handles. My name is Lorenzo, and hopefully this added value. If so, don't be afraid to send and or share this out to your family members and friends. They need to hear the message. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you're alerted anytime new material comes out, and hit the thumbs up. You want more Handles? You can follow me directly on my website. It has all the information you can possibly ask for when it comes to Handles overall. And, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for all your time and attention. I'll catch you guys next time, right here on Handles.